How worthy is the Lamb who is slain, to receive power and divinity, and wisdom and strength and honor. To him belong glory and power forever and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, here we are at the end of the liturgical year, the solemnity of Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. So this solemnity was instituted in 1925 by Pope Pius XI in order to combat the rising of atheism, communism, and secularism that was seen at that time. I grabbed a quick quote from the document that accompanied the declaration of this solemnity. It goes like this. If to Christ our Lord is given all power in heaven and on earth, if all men purchased by his precious blood are by a new right subjected to his dominion, if this power embraces all men, it must be clear that not one of our faculties is exempt from his empire. He must reign in our minds, which should assent with perfect submission and firm belief to revealed truths and to the doctrines of Christ. He must reign in our wills, which should obey the laws and precepts of God. He must reign in our hearts, which should spurn natural desires and love God above all things and cleave to him alone. He must reign in our bodies and in our members, which should serve as instruments for the interior sanctification of our souls, or to use the words of the Apostle Paul, as instruments of justice unto God. Allowing another to reign in our lives seems countercultural in today's world. It seems to have an almost un-American bent to it. But I'd like to raise two points to respond to that sentiment, which is very uncomfortable to us in our day and age. I have always appreciated the image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, but not for the reasons that some people do. We don't really have an agrarian society anymore, so we're understandably a little bit distanced from what shepherding is actually like. We often view these sheep as little cute fluff balls that, you know, prance around the meadow. But in reality, they're not intelligent creatures. I mean, they're often messy and smelly and hard to manage. And in the time that Jesus was speaking, shepherds had a very low social standing in Hebrew society. The image of the good shepherd is one of a man who loves his flock despite the fact that they stupidly wander away, they roll around in the mud, they get lost, they're stubborn. It is the image of a person not afraid of the mess, but who enters into the filth to lead those he cares about to safe pasture. It's the story of a relationship between the leader and the flock. And this is the great story of Christianity, not one of a Lord who sits above everyone, dispensing justice with mailed fist, of a God who, it's a, a story of a God who tenderly loves and seeks the restoration of relationship with the beloved. He so wishes to be close to us, so much so that he identifies himself with the hungry, the poor, the cold, the stranger. And the second point comes right out of this. In the Gospel reading, the Lord separates the sheep from the goats. In no uncertain terms, the sheep go off to eternal life, the goats go off to eternal punishment. Sometimes I think God is presented to us these days as just part of our cultural upbringing. It's like a knick-knack on the mantle, ignored most of the time, Dust it off when we have company and would like to make things seem tidy, and pulled out only when necessary. But Jesus does not see things this way. He sees things, quite rightly, as the relationship between God and man, and as it plays out in the human heart every day, in every action. It takes place in how we pray, it takes place in how we treat others, it takes place in the attitudes that we hold. The goats do not go off to eternal punishment because they broke some rules of a distant God who enjoys the suffering of mere mortals. Hell is a reality because people can reject God. And God is rejected when we swat away his hands as he reaches out to restore and build our relationship with him. We've lost a sense of sin in our culture, I think. We just say, oh well, deep down I'm, I'm still a good person, besides I don't believe that that's wrong, or it's not that bad, you know, there's a lot of other people who do that, or something like that. I think there's a huge temptation for all of us in today's day and age to do that. But Jesus in the Gospel says that that's not so, that our actions do matter, and it's he we reject 
when we do not feed those who require it. It is he we reject when we do not pray. And this is not merely institutional do-goodery. It's our relationship with him that we reject every time we sin. Every time we say, my will, not yours. It is God's kingship in our lives and in the world that we reject by sinning. God asks our reliance on his will because he created us, he loves us, and he's the good shepherd who enters into our muck and leads us to safe pasture. As we wrap up this liturgical year and prepare for Christmas throughout the Advent season, may we all take maybe 15 minutes or more each day to practice the works of mercy and to invite him to reign in our hearts and in our lives over and against identity politics, the love of riches, and the merits of popular opinion. May God bless you.